So hello everybody, now we have reached the end of this series on respiratory system examination. Whenever you are examining a patient, it is always a good idea to be gentle, to be courteous. And whenever you finish your examination, uh, ensure that the patient is appropriately covered when you leave the patient. Now let us come to interpretation of signs. Uh, the decreased chest movements, which is picked up on inspection and confirmed on palpation, is a very important finding. The side where you see decreased movement, the chances are the abnormality is most likely to lie on that side. Now, uh, on percussion, you will ha have dullness uh, when, if there is pleural effusion, pleural thickening or consolidation. In pleural fluid, you have stony dullness. Breath sounds, the vocal fremitus and vocal resonance, they go almost hand in hand. So if one is raised, the other two will also be raised. Somebody can ask, well then wh what is the need to do a vocal fremitus examination if you have done a vocal resonance examination? So the answer to that is that at times when you're looking at one single finding, you may have a difficulty in interpreting that. But if you look at a combination of these three findings, you will have a much better informed uh, conclusion. In pneumothorax, the percussion is hyperresonant or resonant. Uh, the breath sounds, the vocal fremitus and vocal resonance is decreased. So based on the assessment of percussion, the breath sounds, vocal fremitus and vocal resonance, you will be able to differentiate between pleural thickening or pleural fluid and consolidation and pneumothorax. So now let's have a look at this table. If you look at the chest movements, you will see they are decreased in pleural effusion, pleural thickening, consolidation and pneumothorax. So as we had just discussed, if you find decreased chest movement in a child or in a patient, the pathology is most likely to lie on that side. Now let's look at pleural effusion. In pleural effusion, the chest movements are decreased, the percussion is stony dull, and the breath sounds, vocal fremitus and vocal resonance are decreased. Almost similar findings are there in pleural thickening, where you have decreased chest movements, you have dull percussion, and you have decreased breath sounds, vocal fremitus and vocal resonance. So the difference here is um, that this dullness here in pleural effusion is stony, whereas in pleural thickening, the dullness is not stony. This difference of effusion being stony dull and pleural thickening being dull is at times very difficult to differentiate clinically. This differentiation between effusion and thickening is important because a child who is otherwise improving may still have findings which seem like pleural effusion, but it will be because of pleural thickening when there is fibrosis and healing which is happening. So clinically, the findings may still seem like effusion, but you will have to evaluate the patient uh, overall to get an idea whether this is pleural thickening or pleural effusion. Now, if you look at consolidation, the chest movement is decreased on the side of consolidation. The percussion is dull, but the vocal fremitus, vocal resonance and the breath sounds, they are increased. If you look at pneumothorax, the chest movement will be decreased on the side where there is pneumothorax, but percussion is more resonant on the side where you have pneumothorax. So again, as we had discussed in a previous video, dullness is still easier to differentiate from a normal percussion, but a hyper resonance is, is a bit difficult. It's something which you learn with practice. And the breath sounds, the vocal fremitus and the vocal resonance, they are decreased in pneumothorax. Thank you for watching this video. Please help us improve the content by commenting in the comment section or emailing at the link given below, especially regarding the length of this video. Anything which can be removed or anything which can be added or any other comment and suggestion. Thank you so much.